Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more of The Long Dark in our Survival School series. I'm going to step back inside here. Now, as I was mentioning all last episode, I am feeling pretty good about my food and drink situation. So I wasn't in a hurry to fill up those meters because I knew I wasn't losing condition due to any of those problems. Let's go ahead and... We've got a hunting knife now. We found one in the last episode, which is quite nice for opening cans. I don't have a can opener yet, but the hunting knife can be used to open these cans such that I do not waste anything. Okay. So for those of you last episode curious to see what the hunting knife did for me, in addition to other things, it does allow you to open cans. And we'll talk more about what that does as we stumble upon it. So uh, I'll tell you what, those cans are pretty heavy. I've got everything sorted by weight, and I want to eat the heaviest stuff first. Dog food is also a wet food, so I can eat this and not only free up some weight, but at the same time, I can fill up both hunger and thirst, which is quite nice. Now let me go ahead and eat some of these cattail stalks and get over 2,000 calories. Another thing I will say about eating early on Depending on the difficulty level, you will probably develop different strategies surrounding how full you generally keep your calorie meter. And the reason for that is food is more and more abundant the lower difficulty, the lower the difficulty becomes. So right now you might notice, oh, you're at 2,000 calories. That is very rare in higher levels of play in the long dark, period. You just don't see it as often because, well, frankly, you, you just don't have the food. You don't have the food to keep yourself at 2,000 calories reasonably. There's no reason to stuff your face that much. Some players actually advocate, and I'm, I'm not knocking this strategy at all. I don't follow it because I don't, I don't find it enjoyable. But I will still say some players actually advocate as a means of prolonging your resources at higher difficulty levels only eating right before bedtime. Because, see, when you're starving, when the, when the hunger meter is empty... Your condition actually doesn't drop that fast. You don't die that fast from starvation. If you're dehydrated, your condition will drop quickly. But you, your condition actually doesn't drop that quickly. Um, so if you really want to min-max in the long dark and you don't mind playing the system, you can save your calories. You can only eat before bed. Because look, when you sleep, you can actually see how many calories are going to be burned for the amount of sleep that you're planning. So you eat that number of calories, you sleep, you recover a ton of condition while you sleep, and then you go back to being starving. <laughs> um, so that's just something to, uh, during the daytime, that is. So that's that's one thing to think about if you're more of a min-max style player. I am not. But tell you what, let's just go ahead and sleep for three hours. Wait, come on now. Sleep. Hit close by accident. I don't want to sleep the entire day away. Oh crap, looks like we did anyway. I didn't realize we had so much or so little time left. But notice that the question marks went away there. That is generally an indicator that you've got a little bit more visibility. When you are looking at the daylight indicator, it says question mark hours of daylight left or of nighttime left. That's when you know there's either a blizzard or a lot of fog outside. All right, so it feels like 15 degrees, bloody cold at the moment. So this is an interesting question. What do you do? You've got a little bit of time left. Why not spend a little bit of it looking around? So one thing I haven't really talked about yet, I've picked up a few sticks, but I haven't gone into detail about them. Notice when you point at a stick, it tells you both that it can be used in combustion and can be used in crafting. It tells you by, by its icons. Sticks are really, really important to several components of the long dark. First of all, as you saw in the crafting segment, when I briefly talked about crafting in the last episode, you can use them uh, and you can break them down for tinder. So that's one thing, right? But on top of that, sticks can also be used as fuel themselves. You can just throw sticks onto a fire and you've got 10 minutes of fire. So you can also use them to start a fire. Um, they, can be, they can be your starting fuel. Uh, they have a reasonably good starting chance as well because they're basic dry kindling. On top of that, sticks are also used for snow shelters. Oh, hey. I was wondering if you'd be here. Thanks. Hunting rifle. And the guy who was using it before I found it. All right, so here's some trail boots. Trail boots, I think, are a little... Oh, a rifle cartridge. Nice. Trail boots are a little bit better. Let's go ahead and head back. Trail boots are a little bit better than the 
I'm not sure I can carry much more. Yeah, we're officially encumbered now. They're a little bit better than the, the other boots that I had earlier, so I might actually compare those to my combat boots once we get back. Notice I'm now encumbered because the rifle is freaking heavy. It's almost 10 pounds. So finding some of the heavier, more useful tools are what make you start to compromise with your inventory. So we're going to head back to our safe, our safe camp and load up, or rather load down our character. Notice in sprinting at the moment, there is a section of the sprinting bar that is blocked off with red. The sprinting bar can never fill beyond that point. What is that, you might be wondering. Remember how I said that this has a particular function? The clothing that you're wearing can actually limit your mobility, even if you're wearing it on your upper body. So that's why it can be important to keep items of varying types so that you have the ability to change your clothing on the fly. You might want to have at your safe house a lighter set of clothing that allows you more mobility. So if you need to make a long trip on a relatively good day, you can head out and you can come back and have a, have a lot of stuff handy and you can move quickly with the stuff. Whereas if you have your all of your heavy stuff on, you're not going to be able to sprint for as long. And as far as I can tell, and we can talk about this in the comments because this is a newer system. As far as I can tell, your running speed is actually slower as well. So just bear that in mind. Again, talk about that in the comments. That I could be wrong on that. This is a much newer mechanic, but it's just something to be mindful of. What you leave the house <laughs> wearing is important. So let's holster our gun. So actually, no, let's not holster our gun yet because there's one thing we haven't done. I've picked up two bullets, but I need to load them. The reload button is, of course, the X button on Xbox. On the computer, it's the R key. And now I'll holster it, which is the H key or the B button. Hey, dead guy. I'm here to sleep next to you again. I'm so excited about it. Just kidding. No, I'm not. Okay. Now, I mentioned needing to kind of dress down our character because we've got a lot of stuff on us now. We actually have a good amount of lantern fuel. And notice how heavy jerry cans are. Now that we have our rifle on us, I can no longer afford to just carry the jerry can around like it doesn't matter. It does matter. So let's go ahead and light this just briefly. Actually, you know what? Before we put the jerry can down, let's go ahead and refuel our lantern, right? So we're going to refuel that, fill it all the way up. And we're going to drop the jerry can. And I like to put it right here, just by the shelf. There we go. Now, what else are we carrying this heavy? Let's look at our entire inventory. We've got some wood on us. Also, the fire log is particularly heavy. I'm going to stand right by the stove and drop... Oh, wait. Drop something else I didn't mean to drop. Tell you what, let's just go here. Let's drop that. Also drop this reclaimed wood. Wait, I know I dropped something, but I can't tell. Oh, no, maybe I did drop just firewood. My bad. Drop any of this gear. That's what I'm doing right now, dude. Chill out. <laughs> okay, so we've dropped that stuff. We're now back down below our bird level. But notice, here's another mechanic. Lots of little things, right? Notice that our maximum is below 66. Once you get to a certain point of tiredness, your ability to carry things actually drops. You should have seen when they first introduced this mechanic. It applied even when you were close to fully rested. If you were just a little bit not fully rested, you couldn't carry as much. So you would always be slowing down a little bit because the more tired you were, the less, uh, the more encumbered you are, the slower you move. And that is, of course, affected. Your, the degree to which you're encumbered is affected by how tired you are. So, yeah, that was fun. But another thing I'm going to do real quick while I'm up here, I'm going to go ahead and hop into this cupboard. I noticed, or I mentioned rather in a previous episode, that we have all of these cardboard matches. We don't need them. We don't need this many matches on us. And that weight can actually add up. So what I'm going to do is just have these 20 cardboard matches on us. We also have newsprint on us. Lots of newsprint. Let's take a second and just talk about all the stuff we have in our inventory now that we've been playing for a few episodes. And there's so much that you can do uh, with all these different items. So newsprint roll, action, harvest, notice, instant four tinder plugs from one, one newsprint roll. And we, of course, already have a lot of kindling from the cattails we've been harvesting as well. So I'm going to harvest all of these because tinder plugs, newsprint rolls can be used for kindling, but so can tinder plugs. So if I can get four tinder plugs from one newsprint roll, why wouldn't you harvest every single newspaper you come across? Right? So let's do that. So 
I was talking about sticks earlier and got sidetracked because of the because we found the rifle. I also want to talk about sticks since we have some of those in our inventory. One of the main things that you can use the stick for is the snow shelter. And we don't have quite enough for snow shelter at the moment. It requires we can't build it indoors. It requires 15 sticks and five cloth. So take a wild guess how many sticks it's probably a good idea to always have on your person. 15. <laughs> no, I didn't know for a fact that I'd picked up 15 exactly, but 15 is a good number to have as your floor for sticks. That's the minimum you want on you at all times. It's good to have more because then you have the, you know, if you have five extra sticks on you, that's enough maybe to get a fire going when you need one. And then it might give you enough time to go out and find a little bit better kindling around you. Um, maybe, maybe it's just more sticks, right? But enough sticks to get an hour long fire going uh, could be all you need. But then you still have your 15 beneath that that you would need to make a snow shelter in a pinch. And we'll probably do that a little bit later in the series. But that's a good thing to think about now because when you're starting a game out for the first time, that's when you will be picking up the most sticks. You will hit a point where you won't pick up every stick anymore because guess what? They're heavy. You can't pick them all up, right? So anyway, let's also look at the clothing we picked up because we picked up these worn trail boots. And what are the other boots that we had? These are work boots. So work boots, these are 88% condition. The game's not telling me anything about it. Let's compare our trail boots and our work boots. Trail boots have less sprint restriction and they're also less protective against warmth. They're, they're less protective, period. They're more protective against wetness. So in a blizzard, they would do better. Combat boots are still the best bet from the stuff that we have. So we're gonna drop both pairs of shoes because they're super heavy. We also have these worn running shoes on us. Running shoes, notice, have no restriction because they're running shoes. They don't restrict your movement at all. That's what they're made for. But they also have no wetness protection and very little actual protection. Their warmth protection is decent, but it's crappy right now because the condition on the item is so low, right? So, Go ahead and just, I'm moving my shoes in the dark here. Oh, there's one more pair here, I know there is. Where are you bastards? Come on. I know I dropped, oh no, I didn't drop them. <laughs> just kidding, there's not another pair. Right, let's put those right there. Okay, it's pretty dark. Let's go ahead and, we don't have a lot of water left, but what I can do is enjoy this condensed milk. Don't have a can opener, but still have the knife. Problem solved. And let's hop in here. Eight hours sleep. We're probably gonna need, not need. We're probably not gonna need that much. Excuse me. But we need to sleep out this blizzard regardless. All right. I, I hope we wake up right around dawn. That would be best. Okay. It's not quite dawn yet. It almost is though. Uh, I'll tell you what we can do. Let's go ahead and pick up some of this wood. We need some more water, so it's time. Let's go ahead and switch to our wood matches. Cattail head's fine, fur firewood's fine. I'm gonna use one of my accelerants just because reasons. Um, yeah, well, no, let's not use a stick. You might be wondering what those books are used for. I'll show you in a minute. There's still a lot of things I've picked up that I haven't explained yet, but I will get to. Work. Again, if I explained every single thing as it popped up, I'd be all over the place. So, uh, all right, that we used up an accelerant just now, trying that, unfortunately. That kind of sucks. All right, so I am actually going to use my stick because this is one of the best chances of success if I don't use accelerant. So we failed on an 85% chance, unfortunately. It happens. Unless it wasn't 85 and I just, I hit the button when I shouldn't have. Come on. Oh, well. Check your fire chance <laughs> before you start a fire. Make sure you're not using a suboptimal set of ingredients for the situation that you're in. And again, once your fire starting skill is higher, you don't have to worry as much. Especially once you're at level 5. It's beautiful. Level 5 fire starting, I think even level 4 fire starting. You don't need uh, kindling. Did it. Okay, so we've got fire going. Let's go ahead and put some firewood on there. Let's put some reclaimed wood on there as well. So we've got 2 hours 29 minutes on this fire. And I'm going to melt 0.8 gallons. of snow. And now notice that that gave us unsafe water. We need to boil it. Done. And we now have plenty of water. Water is also quite heavy. That's the other thing you have to worry about. Think about carrying around like a full gallon of water all the time. It's nice to have something to drink but it's super heavy to carry around, right? So now we're good, thirst-wise. Now we still have 53 minutes on this fire and we don't want to waste it. 
So I will go ahead and teach a little bit of a trick. It's not so much a beginner's thing, but it's the kind of thing that can deceive you. Like for me playing the Lawn Dark for the longest time, I said to myself, well, I don't want to cook tea or coffee when I find it because, because then I'm going to carry around in a cup and it'll spill, right? Because just intuitively speaking, like these are cups of tea. So how can you carry them around? If you don't actually think about it and you let that, in, that intuition kind of take over, you might not never do what I'm doing right now. And the nice thing, notice I'm getting a cooking skill increase with every single cup of tea that I'm cooking. And you can reheat cups of tea. Are you starting to see the benefit? <laughs> so I'm not wasting this fire, first of all. But I'm also cooking every bit of tea that I've got. Now it's using up some of the water that I made. That's the downside. Well, I got 0.32 gallons of water now. But I now have this hot tea. Now drinking the hot tea gives me 100 calories, which is nice. When cooking skill is higher, it will be even better. But on top of that, check this out. I have improved rest because I drank tea, and because I drank it hot, I have a warmth bonus, which makes it easier to walk around in the cold. So we got 12 hours daylight left. Let's go exploring. And I've got a gun. So if a wolf charges me, I can shoot it in the face, which is literally how I kill wolves. There's lots of different ways to kill wolves, generally speaking. And since you're so curious, I know I've got the gun now. How's this thing work? If you're going to shoot something, you generally want to aim. Notice the very tip. Let me see if I can get some good contrast. Yeah, that's best. Notice the very tip of the forward sight there in the very middle is white. And obviously it's also in the very center. That's what you want to aim with. That's assuming that you are close enough. That is where you have the highest chance of hitting. Shooting in the long dark is more realistic than your average. This is the long dark is not a first person shooter. It just happened to ha it happens to have some first person mechanics and you should not make the mistake of treating the long dark like it is a first person shooter because you will find that shooting in the long dark is more realistic than the average first person shooter. You will miss shots that you feel are perfectly well lined up because you weren't close enough and the bullet went just slightly astray. Now, as your shooting skill increases, as you hit more targets, that will be less of a problem. That was a nice change I feel that they made a while back. And it will become, especially at high levels of shooting skill, it will become even more... Um, it'll become even more uh, easy. It'll become easier to hit things. It'll become a little bit more first-person shooter-like. But when you're first starting out in a new playthrough of The Long Dark, unless you have a feat that gives you a shooting bonus, which I don't even know that there is one, <laughs> just know that you're going to have to aim quite precisely. That's one of the reasons I like to kill wolves the way I do, which is let them charge me, get down nice and low, line up the sights with their face and pull the trigger when they're close. Maximum chance of impact, right? You don't have to do it that way. Once you learn, again, to use that reticle optimally, you can kill wolves with the rifle or even with the bow and arrow. There's a guy named Joey on Twitter. It's been talking to me for a long time. And he posts... You should follow this guy on Twitter, by the way. He, he posts... Um, snippets from his Xbox play of the Long Dark. Hey, rifle cleaning kit. Very nice. We can use that for a rifle, making sure it doesn't drop too low condition. But he posts um, snippets of just shots, and he's ridiculously good with the bow and arrow. It's insane. So it's possible to be quite a sharpshooter, even with the bow and arrow in this game. But it just takes practice, and you have to know what you're doing. All right, so we've got some painkillers here. Emergency stim, very nice. Okay, so we have just now encountered for the first time in this series, oh, here's a flare, let's grab that too and check the plastic container. We've encountered for the first time in this series what is a pretty common thing. Hang on. Hey buddy, how's it going? So we've got a wolf nearby and it's also getting colder. And I don't wanna just sit by this deer carcass while there's a wolf approaching. But we've just encountered one of the game's automatic deer plants, or, or carcass plants. They, there are certain carcasses in the world that'll just sit there. They don't deteriorate because they don't result from one of your kills. They're just there. They don't result from a wolf kill either. Uh, and they're there to give you a little bit of food to encounter along the way. So if I, for instance, use the hunting knife, very important, by the way, to make sure you have the right tool for the job every time you do this, I could get four pounds of meat out of this thing. But I've got a wolf coming up on me. So I generally 
want to not have my back turned while this guy's coming close. Hey, buddy. How's it going? You wanna... You wanna fight? You wanna fight. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Come here. Come here. Now, pro tip. When you line up your sights on the wolf, he'll charge. Watch. And then you shoot him in the face. <laughs> now, I say that, and I made that look easy. I've done that a lot, number one. Number two, understand, sometimes it's not that easy, even for me. Sometimes the wolf will dart in a random other direction when you least expect it. So, we've got a couple of corpses, and I want to finish this point before I end this episode. Um, it's pretty cold, so this is going to be a little bit risky, what I'm doing right now. But you can't leave these corpses out forever. You've got to harvest them. Um, so, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to start a fire. If you're on the computer, you can actually hit the, what is it, the four key? Yeah, just hit four, the number four, not the numpad. Um, and it'll give you the ability to, oh, maybe it won't. Hang on, do I not? Oh, that's why. Oh, crap. Hello. Never mind, we're not harvesting these right now. We're going back to base camp. <laughs> Blizzard just started out of nowhere, so that sucks. We actually lost the ability. We're probably going to lose that wolf kill, but I've got to get inside for obvious reasons, quickly. I'm not encumbered, so I'm able to move at relatively full speed. My fingers feel numb. Yeah, this is bad. This is frostbite risk and hypothermia risk if I don't get inside. Yep, I'm going to have hypothermia risk setting in just a second. Oh, this is not good. I'm out of sprinting capacity. Let's holster the rifle. I'm not encumbered, so I'm, I'm moving as quickly as I can. And we're almost back to base camp. But this is... Oh my gosh. I will show you how to harvest stuff when we don't have a blizzard just descend on us out of nowhere. But this will give us something to talk about before I finish the episode. Absolutely. By the way, if it's a little hard to hear me, I do that on purpose. I like to have the blizzard uh, and also the, the waterfall volumes nice and high when I'm playing the Lawn Dark and recording because that way I have to kind of yell over them. Feels a bit more authentic to me. So I know, it's, I know the blizzard's loud. That's on purpose. So... Let's hop inside out of the blizzard, and we'll take a look at some of the conditions that we developed as a result of being out in minus 44 winds. Okay, what did that do to us just now? There are several things to talk about about this. First of all, hypotherm... Ooh, wow, it's actually not that bad because of the warmth that we were getting from the drink. That was helping us for a bit. We no longer have the warmth bonus because of the hypothermia risk, or possibly because it wore off. But, also, this is what else happened. Notice that all of our outer clothing items, not our inner clothing items, but our outer clothing items, notice the difference, are now wet. When they get completely wet, they can freeze. And when they freeze, guess what? They become officially useless and they have to dry out. They, they still have to dry out because they're wet now. So I need to be inside for a bit and light a fire and just generally warm up. But when clothes are wet, they lose some of their warmth protection bonuses. Let me see if I can show you. So right now, the jeans are only protecting me for 1.1 degree Fahrenheit because they're 43% wet. They are better than that. Same with these. Notice that this bonus is lower. Actually, you know, it might not be showing. Those seem like the right bonuses. But we'll look in a second after these have dried out. So remember, 1.1 for the jeans. Let's start a fire and we'll actually see what the difference might be. But there, I mean, regardless of whether the numbers are showing it, Wetness, and especially frozen clothes, definitely does have an effect, regardless of whether the interface actually conveys it. So we'll see if the interface shows it, but it's just something to something to be aware of. Clothing can get wet now, especially when you're out in blizzards for long periods of time. It doesn't just protect you. Even if you've got... I mean, clothing with good wetness protection is better, right? If you're wearing it. No, that didn't work. Oh, crap. Tell you what. This calls for a 100% fire starting chance. There we go. All right, so we've got a nice guaranteed fire there. And let's also go ahead and heat up one of these cups of herbal tea for obvious reasons. So we're standing by the fire. This is gonna dry out our clothing and we'll get to see how our jeans do in a bit. Oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Where's the hot tea? Have to make sure you drink the right one, right? We've got four on us. Let's drink the hot one, leave the other ones alone. Now again, as I was saying earlier, I didn't, I'm not sure I completed the thought, but Cook all the teas, cook all the coffees whenever you get the chance. Not only do you not waste the fire, but these aren't gonna spill. Yes, they're in cups, so realistically speaking, they should spill, but you get the cooking skill. 
right, for having those. So just to make sure I close the loop on that thought. <laughs> See, this is the this is the fun of doing kind of an ad lib style tutorial for the long dark. It's it's better this way. I genuinely feel it's better this way because there's so many emergent things that can happen in the long dark. So if you try to plan, the game's just going to get in your way, and you'll it, it would be frustrating to watch. So I. In, in attempting to cover all of these topics, occasionally I'm going to lose a thought and have to come back to it. Or if I lose it and don't come back to it, that's when you comment and let me know, and I'll make sure that I talk about it in a future episode, or even do a half episode to uh, to cover it, because this is going to happen just by virtue of this format. So, anyway, let's have a look at our. Let's make sure we're standing in front of the fire first of all. Yeah, it's going up. Okay, so it does actually show differences in the warmth bonus is based on how wet the items are. So again, there are decreases to the benefits of these clothing items based on these things. So let's go ahead and we need to sleep out this blizzard and then go back out and hopefully get that wolf corpse, right? Let's sleep for a couple hours and we'll recover the condition we lost from being out in that cold. We actually lost two condition because it got that cold that fast. Okay, two hours wasn't quite enough, but we should have a little bit more room to rest, so let's sleep for two more. Oh wait, no, 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 damn it. It went away right as we went to sleep. Okay, well at least that gives the weather time to clear up. But on that note, that is also the 26 minute mark for this episode. So I'll go ahead and cut this one here. And in the next one, we will go out and check on that wolf corpse. I will show you what it's like to actually harvest those items and what it's like to have a, a lot of meat for the first time. That's one of the main ways to get large amounts of food and single items that give you huge numbers of calories meat basically especially on higher difficulties where you can't find um salvage items non-animal items that are very very calorie rich calorie dense so um we'll focus more on that stuff in the next episode thanks very much for watching if you enjoyed this one don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along new survival science fiction and or simulation titles air every single day at noon or i'm sorry not noon 6 p.m historical and grand strategy is, is at noon <laughs> The long dark type survival stuff and science fiction and uh, simulation stuff. It's a variety type of slot. It was every day at six on my channel. Thanks for watching. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think. I'll see you next time.